Well, I, um, I came to New York wanting to work in the theater, and I got a job as a receptionist in the, uh, the Merrick office. And um, David Merrick's former casting director, Linda Otto, uh, was going to work for Marion. It was in 1968, you know, no one wanted to make a movie in New York before then because the unions were you know, just so expensive that it was prohibitive. And, um, but then when John Lindsay came in, it became affordable to make movies in New York, and everyone went to Marion. She had been, she had done live TV, and obviously was right. just such a, an amazingly original thinker, and had done, started off careers of people like you know James Dean and Rod Steiger and so forth, and um, and she she was so incredibly original in every way. I mean, starting first of all, no one in the film business business or in the theater business had an office uh, outside of Midtown. Um, film was pretty much on 57th Street and the theater in Times Square. And she and her husband found this brownstone in, on East 30th Street and they totally renovated themselves. Marion hung all the wallpaper. And um, because she wanted to create an environment that was going to be um, a gracious environment for a process that she thought was very painful for a lot of people. And it was re very interesting because she really trained us to be very considerate of actors and to give them the most information we possibly could about what they should expect in the interview and about the script. And But she also was very sensitive to the fact that directors came from all over the world and that they were working out of context as well. And that they needed us to give them a lot of information about the actors they were seeing this because they hadn't seen them in plays or they hadn't necessarily you know experienced any of their work before so um she taught us a kind of graciousness i think about the process that having been said she was a really an interesting woman because you know i think some experienced her as formidable she was sort of a, you know, chain-smoking, kind of arms akimbo, kind of tough gal, a little profane sometimes. <laughs> and, um, but she was, at the truth of it, she was just a darling, darling person and very maternal. And, you know, she, she really considered those of us who worked for her, Nessa Hyams and Wally Nasita and Gretchen Rennell and me, um, her daughter, she would call us her daughters. And I think she... She really meant it, and she gave us an enormous amount of responsibility within her office and, and kind of selflessly allowed us to do movies independently, um, which built our confidence and, and were really you know, invaluable to the, right. our future careers. Well, tell us about one of the first films you worked on there. Oh, well, I remember, I remember when I arrived, um, I was 22 years old, and um, I was a little scared of Mary, and I have to say it first. She always took a little while before she trusted new people. Um, and she was doing Midnight Cowboy. And I remember reading the script, and there was a role of a prostitute. And I, in my little sort of pea brain, thought of the, the most stereotypical idea of what that prostitute might be like, you know. And Marion called in these really interesting. I remember she called in Salome Jens. <laughs> and um, probably there's some people here who are too young to know who Salome Jens is. Uh, but she was a m tall and soft, yes, but a much more complex and substantial person than I, than I ever pictured. And she, she just uh, always, it's a, a little bit like what was discussed about uh, Lynn Stallmaster. She, she was very original, she was very selective. She, she felt she had to kind of almost train directors not to expect her to bring in more than two or three people for a role and that they all would be different. She would not just bring in three identical prostitutes, you know, they would be, every, every single one would bring something different. She always brought a different dimension to things.